um, they kind of lied to us. You know what I mean? Coming, especially coming from the U.S. You know, they showing yeah. us the worst of the worst. You see flies on right. you know, kids' face. You know what I'm saying? You hearing all kind of wild things about, you know, different diseases and shit popping off. And then you yeah. come here and, you know, the people are just really fucking beautiful. Excuse exactly. me. Really beautiful. Really, um, you know what I'm saying? Outgoing. Um, mm -hmm. You know, they have that hustling mentality that I know about, you know, coming from, you know, America and coming from, you know, New York. Um, I seen it. Right. Mm hmm. Um, so what made you start this brand of cashews? Uh, first of all, I would like to know how you like my nuts. I <laughs> no, this is a cashew joke. They're just a big place, all right? Don't think I'm some kind of wild man. It's like, they're just a cashew joke, right? So how, how do you like the cashew daddy? This is a really nice. Hi, you guys. My name is Lala's Journey, and I've been journeying my way through Africa from East Africa to West Africa. And currently, I'm in Ghana here with my interviewee. Can you introduce yourself to the people? My name is Monty, a.k.a. Gusto, a.k.a. Cashew Daddy. Okay. And where are you from? I'm from Brooklyn, New York, you know, here in Ghana now, living in Ghana uh, for about two years. But mm -hmm. I'm from Brooklyn, New York originally. Okay, so what made you come to Ghana? You live here now, so what made yeah. you decide to move here? So, you know, um, I started traveling here in uh, 2020, January mm -hmm. 1st, 2020, and um, just fell in love with the place. You know, I came here dealing with music. You know, I'm a music executive. Mm -hmm. uh, I was working with a label. I'm still working with a label to, uh, you know, deal with some development of artists here in Ghana and throughout mm -hmm. Africa. So when I came here in uh, 2020, January 1st, of course, it was a party going on, you know, <laughs> it was a straight party, right? That so, was the year to return, right? Yeah, no, it was. No, 2019. It was. It was the year of return. Oh, yes. 2020. It was. number 2019 went into 2020. Yeah. So I didn't come in December. I came in January. Oh, January. yeah. Exactly. You came during the time it where was it was lit. popping. Yeah, it was popping. So what was, was your popping. experience like? First, first, first impression of Ghana. Yo, when you first, landed. My first impression when I landed was just like, uh, all right, cool. You know, the airport looks modern, right? Yeah. You know, I thought I was going to be like outside or something. Like some, yeah, yeah, like right. some kumbaya. Yeah. Welcome and, but it was nighttime. So <laughs> when I seen the whole city kind of lit up and everything, I really felt like, yo, you know what? This is dope. You know, this mm -hmm. city looks looks like any other city I would see. Mm -hmm. um, and then, but it was literally, I got off the plane. I met some people or some Ghanaians on the plane. Um, they told me about an all white party. It was literally off the plane, dropped the suitcase, grabbed some clothes, myself and the artist I was working with, and we headed right back out the door. So it was right mm -hmm. into the all white party. Okay. So I got acclimated, you know, the Brooklyn way. You know what I mean? <laughs> what do you mean they, by that? I mean, they showed love right from the beginning. So oh, literally yeah, yeah, right yeah. from the beginning, you know, it was like car blanche into the club. I was with the right people. Um, it was all white party, you know what I'm saying? It was uh, real multicultural, yeah. you know what I mean? It wasn't just like, you know, I thought I would be in like, you know, uh, you know, like a real reggae party yeah. back home, yeah. but I'm hearing reggae, but it's all flavors in there, right? Mm -hmm. I'm hearing uh, hip hop, but it's all flavors mm -hmm. in there. And I was so, so Afro surprised. That, yeah. yeah I'm, I'm in there with, it was like Asians in there. It was a lot of people from Europe, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Just, just multicultural. And it was yeah. really surprising to me on my first date. You know, that's what I'm seeing, you know what I'm saying, yeah, in this party. Yeah. So it was like, yo, this is this is. And it. I'm sure it feels like home. You coming from New York yeah, facts. into another facts, place facts, that's facts. like has diversity. Yeah, So facts. is that one of the reasons like you were uh, like Attracted. tempted to move here because yeah. you see like a benefit? Yeah. So, I, you know, initially, maybe my first four days, it wasn't even about moving here. It was just like, yo, experiencing with all of this it. that's going right. on, right? The mall, you know, it's movie theaters, mm -hmm. um, you know what I'm saying? And the ladies, of course, mm -hmm. you know, all of this is really have you like, wow, this is a place where um, they kind of lie to us, you know what I mean? Coming, especially coming from the US, you know, they showing yeah. us the worst of the worst. You see flies on right. you know, kids' face. You know what I'm saying? You hearing all kind of wild things about, you know, different diseases and shit popping off. And then you yeah. come here and, you know, the people are just really fucking 
beautiful. Excuse exactly. me. Really beautiful. Really, um, you know what I'm saying? Outgoing. Um, mm -hmm. You know, they have that hustling mentality that I know about, you know, coming from, you know, America and coming from, you know, New York. Um, I seen it, right? Mm hmm uh, things, uh, my parents are Guyanese. So I've been to Guyana. I've seen the mm -hmm. hustle. I've seen the living. So it did remind me a lot of Guyana also. Yeah. Um, but it was just like, you know, I was around my peers, right? I was mm -hmm. in with music. I was around people of my peers. So it really, it really was like one of those situations where I felt like, yo, this is not what they told us about. And it seems like a place that I definitely want to, you know, hang out for a while. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. How long was your first trip? month and a half a month and a half month and a half all right so you come here you spend a month and a half in ghana yeah. mm -hmm. you go back to new york <laughs> what are your thoughts as soon as you get back to new Yo, york i spent a month and a half and i thank god that i was able to spend a month and a half i think that's what happened to a lot of people why mm -hmm. they don't ever get back to the motherland for yeah. a little while yeah it's like y'all was there in 2015 right mm -hmm. you know i think um i had the liberty of you know i was already on my independent hustle and, um, you know, so I, I had the liberty to be able to stay for a month and a half. I mm -hmm. actually was going to stay probably for three months. Oh, okay. So why'd you, oh, because of COVID. COVID because of broke COVID, out. Yeah. So when I got back, think about what I was thinking about. I'm like, yo, I left Africa where they saying, yo, you okay? Is everything right. all right? Is everything okay? And then, yeah, and then I end up in America where it's like the epicenter of COVID going on in Africa. There's nothing going on. So, you exactly. know, you know, like you feeling like you made the wrong move. Decision, right. <laughs> because people's mental health was declining during COVID you, you, you in New York. Me? People were going crazy, throwing smoke bombs on the train and killing yeah. people. Like, yeah, it was wild. Just was because wild. they asking you to put on a mask. You yeah, know, you know like, and if you had family, you know, your parents was older, you know, that you heard what they were saying about that. So you really was trying to figure out, you know, like, yo, how do I survive this thing, exactly. right? You know? I just have Africa where people are surviving. But um, yeah, so exactly it was like, yo, I want to get back. I need mm -hmm. to get back to a place where, you know, it's not it's not um, you know, heavily infestated with people, you know, yeah. dying from this thing, right? Yeah. So exactly. you like, yo, I seen a place and the stereotypes were so much um different, right? From mm -hmm. what they showed us and what I grew up under, you know, understand about Africa. And then having a Guyanese background, I try to understand how does it all tie in. Because I remember growing up, my mom always saying, you know, we're from we're from Ghana. And I'm looking at her like, Ma, you're from Guyana. Where do you know this? <laughs> right? But it was something that was passed down to her on mm -hmm. her side of the family. So, you know, when I went, when I actually came to Ghana, I was like, yo, you know what, Ma? I seen a lot of women that shape like you out yeah, there. Just <laughs> <laughs> so I think you might be right with this. Thing. She's like, nah. And then she started telling me, you know, different stories. So it was like, yo, you know, there's a real connection there. So I felt great to be able to be one of the family members to kind of make it back. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what made you, when is it you decided to move back? Like, what is it that was that, um, you know, click for you that decided, where yeah. you decided to say, you know what, let me take up and just move to, yeah. to Ghana. So before, I, before I ended up leaving, you know, I, I did, um, I was in Airbnbs, so, you know, probably mm -hmm. for my last two weeks or so that I was here. Mm -hmm. And um, that kind of let me know, I kind of figured out what the pricing was really for apartments, right? Mm -hmm. So I met some good people. You know, it's always about meeting good people when you come to Ghana mm -hmm. or come to Africa, period. Anywhere outside of the U.S., you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You got to have your street rides on, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Yeah. And you also mm -hmm. have to be able to meet good people and have a, a good uh, discernment of people's and their characters, but you have to put the trust in yourself. That's what I would say. Mm -hmm. You know, put the trust in all your all your travels and your knowledge. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 You got to be like that because it's a place where outside of the U.S., you know, um, people may not come across money as as readily. Mm -hmm. So you are like a meal to people. You know what I mean? You know, mm -hmm. like a meal on the table and you hungry. Yeah. Yeah. You can be a meal. You yeah. Be and food. it's not even just Americans because when I travel to Tanzania, People from Botswana were being overcharged. People from, yeah. Z uh, yeah. you know, Zimbabwe were being overcharged. Like, they just smell like money because you're yeah. from somewhere different. Well, you know, Especially I Especially America. I had, I, I was definitely ran into some good people that explained it to me like this. Mm -hmm. They say, yo, you know, where you're coming from, there's nothing like that. They was like, yo, if I was to give it to you, t tell you, it, it was like, yo, and this is a guy named telling me this. He's like, yo, you like in a third world country, mm -hmm. the whole of Africa. And I was like, yo, what you mean by that? Nah, son, it's a lot of resources. It's beautiful here. Mm -hmm. He was like, yo, people just don't have the means of making money, money the right. same way. 
So when they come across you, it may be months before they could come across somebody like you again. Exactly. It was like, so they're always going to try to. And he said, not everyone, but most people are going to try to, you know, try to, uh, you know, see how they can, uh, you know, make a little extra on you. Yeah, exactly. Okay. See you as an opportunity, basically. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I've had a few people try to act, you know, use me as an opportunity. Mm -hmm, and it's mm -hmm. like, no, because firstly, yeah. I'm from, I lived in New York. I'm not from no, New York, but I lived in New York for seven true. years. And if you could you survive could there, yes, you could survive <laughs> anywhere. And, you know, it's a real um, slick token, I'm really right? street smart. <laughs> so at first, of course, you know, you walk into an environment, you really don't know the environment, but it doesn't take me long to study the yes, environment I mean, to see like, yeah. what are the actual prices? What is what, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Facts, yeah. Facts, facts, so facts. what about you? Like, do you feel like if you could survive in New York, you could survive any anywhere. Yeah, definitely. You can survive anywhere. You know, I left New York City um, playing ball in college. Mm -hmm. And then I went down to uh, Florida. I, was I didn't know you played ball. <laughs> yeah, I played basketball <laughs> I in high school and also in college. Word, yeah, I played basketball in Baruch College. In college. <laughs> Word, oh, you can spazzy. You got to come out Which and play with us. What position did you play? Point guard, of course. Okay, I was a center. All right. Yeah, yeah, center or a small forward. No doubt. I'll put you. Mm -hmm. I'll put you in the paint. See what you're working with. <laughs> don't let me post you up. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Let's see what's good. I don't think we're talking about. Y'all saying we're not ballers, not nah, ballers, ballers. You know how I go, ballers, right, ballers. Right. <laughs> so but, uh, yeah. So what year did you decide to move out here? Like. Yeah. So you know, it was um 2021. Basically, it was, um, so you so came at the back end that end of twenty. Year. I came back actually that no same time. year. I came back November that year. <laughs> so when he opened the borders in, I think it was like August. I jumped. I jumped on a plane uh, Thanksgiving. Wow! Like the day before Thanksgiving. So what convinced so, you in less than a year to pick up, leave New York, one of the yeah. biggest cities in the world, and come to Ghana? It was. I think it was exactly um, being here for a month and a half and being able to see the opportunities that were there, mm -hmm. right? Uh, dealing coming to Ghana and not only just being like uh, our tourist, but I was really in the music scene. Mm -hmm. So to be able in between that was was a good feeling. It was a good vibe uh, for me coming to Africa. Uh, I would definitely say like I'm I'm an anomaly here in in, in Ghana. Because I'm definitely a real one. You know, I'm from Brooklyn. I deal with the music. But I definitely live the real life, you know, um, you know, growing up and taking care of my family and, you know, things like that. Mm -hmm. So I would say that, you know, uh, when a lot of my friends seen that I was leaving, they was like, yo, what's going on over there? <laughs> but a lot of them, they, really was, know, like, they want to know what's going on. There? Like, what yo, bro, you got a lot going there? on here. Why would you want to go there? Like, right. what's going so, on? So, yeah, answer the question because I could answer it for well, you, but I don't know. Yeah. Personally, what's yeah. your answer? So yeah. what is it about Ghana that you've seen that made you leave New York uh, and so decide to choose I this I think country? it was exactly what a lot of us are looking for, especially the real ones. you looking at, you know, be able to stack your money and live at peace, mm -hmm. right? And I think when I came here, I seen the opportunity to, um, to make money and also to uh, have a lot of peace. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I think that, you know, a lot of the racism and things that we dealt with in America, it's just something that we overlook right. daily, right? We overlook it daily. Not only that, those are the opportunities, you know, they are there more readily than, let's say, in the motherland, right? Mm -hmm. But it's a different kind of opportunity. I believe it's opportunity for us to kind of work, you know what I mean? Things mm -hmm. like that. I mean, there's opportunities also to, uh, you know, invest. But I believe, like, you know, when you're in the motherland and you start to understand what's going on, you understand that the resources are here and all the billion and trillion dollar companies, they right here because this is where the resources mm -hmm, are. Exactly. So, me being a person, you know, a hustler and a person that, you know, admires business, mm -hmm. um, I realized that big business could happen for me here. Yeah. Um, and that's the thing that kind of made me say, yo, when I'm coming back this time, I'm looking for an apartment. Because exactly. once I found out how much the apartments really were, and I, not only that, when I came, right, I really wanted to get something around like three hundred a month, mm -hmm. three hundred dollars a month, mm -hmm. something like and that. And what did you end up? I, I ended up getting something that was like about a hundred and ten dollars a yes. month, right? Smart. And and uh, <laughs> even now with how the economy changes, even less than a hundred. Right? Yeah. A lot of people be like, "Yo, you lying? You must live in a shack." I live in a gated community. Two bedroom, one bath. Two bedroom, one bath. It has a basketball court, a soccer field, 
a tennis court. What's your name and, on his number? And you know, it's just I, I think I think that yo, you know, I definitely plug you, but I think that yeah. I was I left out uh, in regards to you know destiny and and wanting to be mm-hmm. here and asking for the ability to be here and and it kind of working out like that for mm-hmm. me, you know. So yeah. when you ask for things, I really wanted to yeah. get back here. I really wanted to get an apartment, and mm-hmm. I felt like yo, you know what? If I have the opportunity to be able to, um, you know, make that happen, and that's what I want to do. Mm-hmm. What's that? That's me and this uh, tea that I got here is chamomile oh, tea. Oh, okay. And, you lick and the way you lick on that made it look yeah, yummy. Yeah. <laughs> it's the honey. Oh, that's why. Okay. Oh, you like that? Yeah. Let me do oh, it again. <laughs> oh, y'all from Brooklyn. Stop playing. <laughs> Focus. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. yeah. All right. So, what we were um, talking about earlier, you said you mentioned something about, um, you know, pri- like basically prioritizing health over yeah. financial. Because, you know, in New York, you can easily exactly. make opportunity. You can make money, especially if you're competitive, yeah. like myself or, or you're like you, you know. So, um, what is it that makes it more beneficial to choose? Ghana? Is it because you prioritize uh, mental health, uh, holistic living? Yeah. What is it that you are looking for and you prioritize that made you choose this country? You know, that's a really good question. I think you hit it on the head. You know, it's a mental health and it's a relaxation. Yeah. I believe that, you know, um, most of us, especially if you're a hustler, you're building, you're an entrepreneur, you know, you're building, right? You're transitioning from the hustling into, let's say, you know, um, real business. I think that, you know, um, you're always on, you know, you're, you got to click and you're using all your senses, you know, mm-hmm. your, your sight, your hearing. You know, it's like just like if you're in the streets, you're hustling right? as an entrepreneur in the States. And I think when you come here, because the pace is a lot slower, mm-hmm. it allows you to be like a, a writer that needs that kind of solitude. Yeah. So that's what it gives me, right? So when I'm here and gone, I'm able to create, be very innovative mm-hmm. and creative without feeling like I'm doing 50 things. I could be doing 50 things here, but exactly. I don't feel burdened down with, with those yeah. 50 things that, yeah. you know, um, that's going on. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, that, that whole overall self care, you're able to be able to attain to that. You can hear your voice speak more, right? Mm-hmm. Or that voice that may be speaking to you, telling you, you know, what moves to make right now. Yeah. And I believe that, you know, you can, uh, hear that a little bit better. And it's just a slower pace of life that allows me to be more creative and mm-hmm. innovative. Um, of course, you know, the food you can get, uh, you can get, you know, food that's more healthy, right? Yeah. If that's what you want, yeah. right? So some people I know, they do farm-raised chickens and turkeys and all of that. This is crazy. I actually just did a yeah. video about this. Like, if you, you, when you choose America versus Ghana mm-hmm. or Ghana versus, you just got to pick your poison. What yeah. is it that mm-hmm. you really, like, yeah. prioritize? And for me, I prioritize my health, my um, mental health. At one point, though, New York did excite me, like the yeah, yeah. fast life. No you know what that, I right? mean? Like, you can walk outside of stores right, right there. Right, exactly. And get something that's on its way. Exactly. But now, you know, I, she was beautiful, by the way. Mm. Anyways, um, yeah. So when wow. you, like, choose New York, it's all about excitement. But here, it's like, there is the rat race. Here, it's like a natural pace of living. Yeah, so, you know, you wake up. Sometimes, in, when I was living in Tanzania, the chickens wake you up. You hear the roosters. <laughs> I know, you I know. know. And if you don't go to sleep at a certain time, you're going to be forced to wake up at, a, you know, the normal hour. Not to race and run into the traffic and, like, race to work and come back and Nah. Or to take out, like nah. that's what the American life is about. Like, think about it. If, if with this interview we were doing, we probably would have been doing this interview way earlier, probably in the day. You know exactly. what I'm saying? Because <laughs> you want to get it out of the way, right? So if you notice, um, even here early afternoon, you know what I'm saying? It's at a slower pace. Mm-hmm. Not a lot of people are even here at this venue. But for me, it's really about you know the overall care of my body. Mm-hmm. I mean, I've gained weight since been, being in Africa. Mm-hmm. Some people be like, "Yo, you know what I'm saying?" And I think we do. We do lose. lose we do lose, lose, right? We do lose initially, mm-hmm. right? Initially, um, yeah. But I think that um, you're able to get into yourself to understand what kind of works for you. 
Mm-hmm. So it's not the rat race where you get to slow down and listen to your body. You watching what's going on because it's moving at a slower pace. Yeah. So for me, um, I just love the overall self care that Africa gives me and Ghana gives me. Um, and you know, um, you know, you you just keeping your sharp hat on. You know, keeping exactly. keeping yourself sharp. But the fact that I can build, um, you know, this this. Uh, this Cashew Daddy brand I'm sure we're oh, getting yes. into. Oh, yes. Y'all wonder what I was chewing purpose. on. I've been chewing on his brand. It's Cashew Daddy. I'm going to post it there, you guys, wow. so you can see. Um, you have a website and everything like that, right? Yeah, yes, I do, I'll post I do, everything. I do. Um, so what made you start this brand of cashews? Uh, and first of all, I would like to know how you like my nuts. I l- <laughs> 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 you know, that's a cashew joke. They're just to break the ice, all right? Don't think I'm some kind of wild man or something. It's exactly. just a cashew right. joke, right? Exactly. So how, how do you like the cashew These daddies? are really nice. The cashews are really tasty, by the yeah, okay, way. And I'm okay. sipping them with Frappuccino. What's up? He yeah. has his tea, his croissant. It's, it's a vibe, you know? Okay. Um, It's really nice, actually. So what made you start this company? Ah, so, you know, um, great question. You know, I, I started off with, um, I believe it's something that's really kind of like divine for me. Mm-hmm. Um, something that's brought a lot of purpose into my life. So I just love cashews. I've always loved cashews. Uh, honey roasted was actually like my favorite to, mm-hmm. to eat. And, um, when I came here, I tasted the cashews here and it was just like, you know, it was so fresh. You know what I mean? It was like, so, you know, mm-hmm. I eat cashews, right? They didn't have uh, honey roasted as much here, but the fresh roasted cashews were really good, right? They mm-hmm. were they were good to me. They reminded me of cashew that I tasted from the islands, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, I, I just was buying them all the time and um, I would buy like one bottle, two bottles at a time, sometimes three bottles. And then... Um, you know, one of my friends, you know, she was like, yo, you know, won't you buy a bigger one, right? So I'm like down to the last three. Say, like, won't you buy a bigger one? So that kind of sparked something in me to say, yo, let me check to see if there's anywhere here where I could buy a bulk of it, you know what I mean? Yeah. Instead of buying bottle, bottle. Mm-hmm. So um, I called the companies that I was buying it from, you know what I mean? They was telling me what their prices were. But then I'm like, nah, I'm going to get something bigger, right? Yeah. Because it's still not the wholesale. margins. It's not wholesale yeah. to me. And I, I just did some research and, and thank God that I traveled all over kind of Ghana, not all over Ghana, but I traveled some places pretty Mm -hmm. far in Ghana. So when I found out that, you know, where these farms are is like 10 hours away, I was just like, yo, I already did like eight hours here. So what's two more? So I traveled out to the farm. New York hustle. uh, Yeah. Like I literally did it like for (laughs) real, for real, like, you know, swampy jungle. Nah, ain't no jungles. Let me stop. (laughs) Definitely village. Right. So I went through that, traveled out there, you know what I'm saying? Literally like three wheelers through all kind of, you know, villages and all that. But I made it, I made it happen. Once I got there, what made me know this was divine and really like meant to be was that it was a holiday. Sorry. It was a holiday and the place kind of closed up. Oh, thank you. (laughs) Sorry about that. I thought you were wait, but... Yes. So, you know, the, the place was closed. It was a holiday. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So when you sure got the J's on and all that, I know, you know what I mean? Cool. We find out. So, <laughs> you know, um, I was like, yeah. So, you know, it was closed. It was a holiday. But I still was able to, um, you know what I'm saying, uh, meet the the cooperative uh, mm-hmm. president. So it's a mm-hmm. cooperative of cashew farmers mm-hmm. that I ended up, um, you know, doing business with. But I met the actual president, the one that coordinates all the cashews mm-hmm. and everything. Yeah, so that was like God sent. And when I met him, everything me, aligned. Yeah, everything kind of aligned. You know, as a hustler, I'm looking at weight. You feel me? I'm looking at just mad cashews all over the place. So, you know, I just inquired how much is it. And then next thing I know, I got 100 pounds of cashews coming back to our crowd with. Wow. And I didn't know, you know, what I'm going to do, how I'm going to process it mm-hmm. or anything like that. But, you know, just knowing what the aesthetics from the States and then the aesthetics that I've seen here, I figured that it can happen. So I'm looking at, you know, these two boxes of uh, cashews, right? And like, you know, how do I do this thing? So I started doing my research and my inquiring about, you know, what's the process like, you know what I mean, to Mm -hmm. make it happen. And um, and then from there, I had my first prototype, which is my 150 gram bottle that Mm -hmm. I still sell to this day. But I'm kind of phasing that out, you know, understanding my business and what I'm in. 
um, trying to get more to, you know, um, modern uh, looking uh, stuff stepping outside of what people are used yeah. to in Ghana. Yeah. You know, just uh, just trying to stay to the aesthetics that we know about coming from the States, right? So did you have to follow like a legal pursuit procedure to start yeah. this business? Yeah, of course, of course. So, you know, after I came with that, then I started the business. Um, and, it's, you know, I've grown. I've done a lot of things since starting the business, right? So, you know, you start off with a business and you incorporate, then, you know, you start to set up your you know, your trust in a way mm-hmm. where, you know, it can, it can hold and house all of these things, right? So you don't yeah. have those, uh, personal, uh, things against you. But, um, yeah. So, you know, just building a team, you know what I'm saying? Getting a lawyer on the team to handle, uh, mm-hmm. some things I'm dealing with, with land and all of that. But, you know, that, that's things that I'm dealing with now. I mean, we came a long way. We didn't start with this. Like I said, we started with the local bottle mm-hmm. that, um, you might see oh, here. Oh, yeah. The I local started with ones. that. Yeah. And, um, yeah, you know, I, I registered a company. I got my barcodes. Mm-hmm. Um, FDA was, um, one of those things where I think, you know, you're listening to the local people and everybody's scared of like, you know, oh, FDA, they're going to take mm-hmm. the money and all that. Yeah. You know, when I went through the process, um, it was a streamlined process. Um, and again, like another one, another thing that makes me uh, feel like it's a lot of purpose and a lot of, you know, divine intervention with this is because I kind of went through that process and it wasn't, it wasn't really crazy was for me. Was it lo- like a long time? Like no, it wasn't a very long process, process mm-hmm. but it's a process, right? Okay, how you long have did it take? Um, it didn't take very long at all. It was uh, testing at GRA. I wanted, not GRA, but... um. Uh, the testing place. I mm-hmm. forgot what the name Approximately how long? How many months? Uh, I want to say that the process probably took me about four months. Four months. Okay. Yeah. Got it. You're going from place to place and then, you know, they kind of move slow a little a little mm-hmm. bit sometimes. Yeah, I paid you for got expedited. it like... Call, they keep, didn't even do keep anything. Keep on them. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, but besides that, it was just a process and we got through it, right? Mm-hmm. So from starting the business, um, then to moving into uh, doing testing, to get mm-hmm. FDA, uh, you know, my FDA number mm-hmm. and stuff. Yeah. So that, that was it. Yeah. That was the process. Cool. Yeah. So, all right. So anybody want to start their business? He just gave you the, the code, the blueprint. So yeah, yeah. as far as um, how successful is it going now since you yeah. first started to now, what has been a transition for you? Well, I can tell you, you know, it's been great, right? Mm-hmm. You know, um, I'm not here to sugarcoat anything. It's like any other business that you're doing. You're looking to scale. You're looking to grow, right? Mm-hmm. So that takes continued uh, being innovative and um, believing in yourself, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, you get to the point where you understand that you can't do it on your own. You're trying to transition a mm-hmm. hustle into a business. Exactly. So, you know, it was just me, myself and, you know what I'm saying, my partner. And now it's like, you know, myself and, you know, I have some employees that I employ because you want to scale, you want to grow, you want to be able to pop out more, right. um, more production. Right. Um, so, you know, of course, everything is about um, income, right? Mm-hmm. You know, about uh, cash flow. Yeah. So uh, for me, I thank God that I'm in a cash flow game, mm-hmm. right? So I- I've set my terms up in a way that it works for me. Um, you know, I've had accounts where um, I had to let go of, right? 14 stores just because uh, they're paying me in two to three months and things like that, right? Mm-hmm. That wouldn't allow me to have enough cash flow and grow. So, yeah. yeah. So I stick to the rules, you know what I'm saying? Um, I'm starting to study more and more successful people, um, you know, making my circle, you know, of people that are about business. Mm -hmm. So, you know, iron sharpens iron, right? Right. So you want to, you want to continue to, uh, keep your, you know, your mindset on, on business Mm -hmm. and how can I grow this thing? How can I continue to scale? Okay. So what did you do in New York? Did you have a business in New York? Yeah. So I started a bunch of different, uh, you know, companies when I was in New York. Uh, uh, one of the things that I started early that really got me into the music was the street team. So I formed a street team called uh, Say Word Promotions. And that's what really kind of uh, transcended me into different parts of the music. Then from there, I started doing a uh, music plugin. Uh, mm-hmm. I was a music plugger for different artists, uh, breaking songs in uh, the South Florida region, uh, mm-hmm. 99 Jams. <clears throat> and then um, from there, I wanted to get into the business of music because I felt like I was getting burnt. I didn't really understand the music, you know what I'm saying? I'm placing songs into movies, but I didn't really understand the business side of it. Mm-hmm. So that's when I started really, uh, you know, studying uh, how, how do you get paid, right, for music, right? How do you really make money? And that led me into becoming a music administrator and working with different independent artists and uh, independent labels to uh, just basically find the money, you know, yeah. find the money, secure the money uh, when it comes down to music. And, um, yeah, so, you know, that's what I've been doing as far as music. Um, 
And also, you know, just been on my entrepreneurial hustle tip. You know, I yeah. started the street team, like I said. Um, I started my own label um, at one point. It's really just so I kind of build my catalog. So you've um, always been like entrepreneur mind. Yeah, I've always yeah. been really on it, really yeah. on it. So, you know, when I came here to Ghana, one of the very first things I was doing was, um, of course, it was the music. But um, I had purchased some gold. You know, Ghana is the Gold Coast. I purchased some gold um, through some people that I knew. And then I moved ahead and, uh, uh, you know, bought my own concession with a partner of mine. And we started digging for gold. And I learned really? a lot with that. Yeah, yeah. There wasn't any Did gold there. Did you find there. any? No, we didn't find any <laughs> oh, gold okay. there, you know. But there, <laughs> there definitely was um, There definitely was a uh, a mineral within the ground that had a worth to it. Mm -hmm. And I would say to anybody that's, you know, looking to come to Ghana or Africa, yo, keep your, keep your innovative and creative hat on. Because there's going to be a lot of things that you're going to yeah. come across that will make you some money. And for some of us, it's going to make us a significant amount of money. Mm -hmm. So in regards to the business in that I'm doing right now, I think uh, Cash Your Daddy's been godsend. It's given me a lot of purpose. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I'm just looking to scale. You know, I feel like I'm doing good right now, but I'm looking to, um, you know, get more stores, more doors. Mm -hmm. um, and then looking to diversify the brand, right? So start getting into some gluten-free powder, um, probably doing some things, um, yeah. maybe some cookies, uh, you know, we have the That's cashew smart. daddy yeah. juice already that we're doing. So, you know, we're looking to do some other things to just diversify the brand. And yeah, yeah that's, that's very that smart. We're to do. How would you compare living here versus visiting? Like, what's the difference? Because uh, so, I was just thinking about yeah, that yesterday. Like, what time. did what type of differences do you experience? So, you know, I think that, you know, um, living here, uh, I think that living here is definitely one of the things that... Um, I wish I'd have did a lot sooner. Mm -hmm. When you come to visit, I think the majority of people come and they visit and they only stay for like uh, maybe two weeks. Two weeks, yeah. That's three weeks, that's maybe. Mm -hmm. And that's real touristy, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, I thank God that I had the liberty to stay here for a month and a half. I probably wouldn't have came back, mm -hmm. right? I probably would have, oh, I went to Ghana. I'll go back there another time. Um, and, you know, and I left in the middle of uh, having a lot going on, right? So, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I'm doing my music executive thing. I'm in Jamaica. I'm filming, um, you know, a video with Luciano. You know, I'm, I'm working nice. with a bunch of different artists. Um, I'm also filming um, a viral web series called Respect Life. Okay, um, yeah, you told me about that. Yeah, I'm doing that. So I'm in the middle of this and, and you know, deciding like, yo, I'm going to leave, right? I'm yeah. Gonna, I'm going to go to Ghana. I'm going to kind of hold it down. Yeah. But so, I think, wait, have you ever experienced like power outages and water outages or anything? Nah, like that? nah. So, you know, we can, I'm from the States, right? So I, I grew up in, in America, right? Mm -hmm. So I didn't really have that. But when I went to Guyana and I was out there for a month, then I experienced that. So you haven't experienced any water outages or power outages? No, no, no. In Ghana? In Ghana. Yes, I have. <laughs> okay, yeah, have me? No, no, of course. But, yeah, but when you visited, Ooh, nothing, right? when I When I visited, yes, I did. I did experience oh, that. Visited, yeah, I did experience okay. that too. So, you know, for me, you got to remember that you hearing your peers as your parents and your siblings that grew up in the islands, they telling you that this is what's going on. Right. Then you come to Ghana and you experience it for yourself. You only like, yo, this is an experience. You're not living here. You know you're going back. Exactly. <laughs> so it's no problem. So it ain't no problem. Right. You know? So, um, but, you know, even with all of that, right, happening, I definitely wanted to uh, come back, right? I wanted yeah. to come back. And I didn't want to just come back. I wanted to be able to get an apartment. Because on my mind, it was like, yo, if I leave, I just put it on Airbnb anyway, right? Yeah. So that, that's where my mind was at. Um, I believe that. So why? Why? Why did you want to come back? Because, you know, in New York, we don't have any power outages, any water outages. I know you said, you know, opportunity, but what is it yeah. that stands out so much to you that, you know, you, you're like, you know what? I'll sacrifice yeah. water and yeah. power sometimes. So, you know, I, like I said, I'm a real one. I really was hustling. Mm -hmm. I think it was in like 2018 that I said, that's it. You know, I'm not working for anybody anymore. I really was on my independent hustle. So whether it was do it ash or whatever to supplement mm -hmm. the income you feel me i was really done with it i'll be honest with you you know what i'm saying I, I was hustling you know what i'm saying i really was 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 in my bag with hustling you know what i mean yeah. um you know you name it you know what i'm saying as a, as a product of the inner city i was definitely involved in it um and i think that i felt like the walls were closing in on me a little bit in mm -hmm. regards to the hustle um you know uh, i felt like um I wanted to be able to achieve, uh, you know, 
something that you know people would deem unachievable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and when I came here, I I um, said, "Yo, this is the place that I can make that happen." Right. Yeah. Um, just from just from that month and a half, you know. But I just felt like I wanted to get back to it. I think it's something that the motherland will call on you a little bit. Mm-hmm. I think even the people that come here and they stay for two weeks and they leave, I think the motherland is calling on them. But that 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 draw in America is real. So I mm-hmm. think what happened is. You know, it's if hard you don't, to give up that convenience. Yeah, not a convenience. You mean, remember they you they paying you every two weeks. Exactly. You know what I mean? You you putting it in. So that's how people look at it. But I feel like, yo, if you if you are true, you know, truly believe in yourself, you'll make whatever it is happen. I think a lot of us have the opportunity to get a whole month off, mm-hmm. even if you're doing a, a nine to five, but you gotta stack it up. Yeah. Right. But then some people be scared to tell their management that they're going to Africa because mm-hmm. they upper management. They know they racist. Exactly. They like, yo, if I tell them I'm going to Africa for a month, they're going to fire me anyway. <laughs> so, you know, um, you know, those are the things I think a lot of us dealing with. I didn't have to deal with that. I bought my ticket and I kept it pushing. Exactly. Right? I, I was just like, I yo, I check. Have a and box. then it was wild because <laughs> the amount of money that I came here with for that month and a half, right? Yo, it was like, I swear to you, I might have came here maybe 1800 yeah, that's not. And much. it was, and it wasn't a lot. But <laughs> I, I lasted the whole time exactly. here. You know, I lasted the whole time. That was here. about the same amount. The I second think. time I came, I think I came with like five thousand, mm-hmm. and I la- I was here for like about five to seven months, mm-hmm. and I lasted the whole time and went back with money. Mm-hmm. So I'm trying to explain to you the cost of living is different. But if you don't fall in the hands of people that can show you how things really work out, and yeah. you don't have a streetwise about you, I think. You're going to be fooled to a lot of people out here yeah. in Africa, not only God. Fooled by them a lot, right? Yeah, so you got to yeah. be able to network because a lot of people have showed me the way. You know, I've even had like people set me up with my phone, SIM card, yeah, yeah, everything. Yeah, for real, for real. Like you got to make mm-hmm. friends as soon as you, as soon as you touch down. So, um, what is it that is like a complete culture shock to you in Ghana? Mm. <laughs> It's a couple of things. Take your time. I would say um, one of the things that was a culture shock to me is how much people bleach their skin. Yeah. That threw me off. I was just like, yo. Yeah. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I showered at this guy's house mm. that I was talking to, and the show, the soap says brightening. So I was like, mm. writing, like, you know, I'm thinking it's like some some catchy word for like, Mm-mm. you know, make your skin clean or something, you know, writing for real, writing like skin. And I was like, and then he mentioned something like, oh, your skin is is uh clearing up real nice. And I was like, what are you talking about? Oh shit! And, but that soap didn't damn work on me because I've always been this skin color. No, no, no. But like, you, I would you never want to. You bleach. know what I mean? Hell no! I was like, what? What do you mean? Yeah, threw me off. Threw me off. That damn. shit threw me off. I was like, what are you talking about? Oh, he damn. was like, oh, if you don't know your like powers. You got a little bit lighter. I was like, no. What is this? A skin bleaching soap? So? He was like, yeah, yeah. I'm right, like, nigga. you bleach. That that was a turn off. So yeah, that was it. How you entry, yeah, man. You try to slip one on me, my nigga. <laughs> <laughs> you try to slip one on me, my nigga. Like, what are you doing? Oh my gosh. Yeah. Not violation. Um. Exactly. So yeah, that like that is a, a big skit, thing. Yo, yeah. that reminds me of a skit I see. That's a big thing. And then um across the street mm. from the place that I lived in in Chado, um there was this girl. She I think she was a hooker, mm. and I I see her like her daily schedule she will get up she will you could tell she bleaches right mm. but she would never come out only at night to keep the skin tone crazy that's crazy yeah that the bleaching uh screwed me up um what else what else uh threw me off out uh, here yeah. um uh what you call it uh what else I would say that threw me off? There's a couple of things that threw me off. What about off. prostitution? I will already oh, mention yeah. that in a few of my videos. Yeah, that was that that was definitely some a culture shock too, because I didn't expect that here. Yeah. I didn't expect it like that. I didn't expect I thought, it. When you look day. at the, the, <laughs> the girls that's working, you think they yeah. just like if you lived in New York, you think these are girls just hanging out on a block, just just, you know, about to go party, about right, to go club. To no, they working. Yeah, yeah, to it. Right. Yeah, so, to it. Yeah. And you know, 
And that's why, like, they have to have certain laws here, right? Mm -hmm. So they're talking about doing, um, you know, gay laws and all of that. Yeah. Could you imagine they pass laws like that it's here? It's crazy, that's though, because it's a download community here, too. And I thought, yeah, I've sure been here where they hang out at, you yeah. know? <laughs> and um, actually, I was at a, a bar, and it was one of the, the my favorite bars out here. And I go there. I'm not going to call out the name, but I, I went don't there. Blow, don't blow them. <laughs> right. I went there and uh, this girl was looking at me and I'm not naive. I'm just a little innocent. You know, <laughs> <laughs> the girl, she was waving. I was like, hey, you know, and yeah. she comes over. She's like, uh, can I have your number? And I was like, uh, yeah, 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 sure, sure. Let's hang out. And uh, she showed my friend, no attention, my female friend. I'm like, why are you not talking to her? You didn't say hi. Or nothing. nothing. She she is she was focused. She was like, "This is what I want." If I talk to your friend, it looks like you I'm know, trying to talk to your friend. Yeah, yeah. Because you know how females are. They all be like, <laughs> right. so be like, "Oh, she was trying to talk to me too." But no, yeah. I realized like she was choosing, oh, and I'm shit. like, "Wow, okay, this is the bar they go to." And then I've started hearing rumors about this is where they hang out. This is hmm. where they go. But to pass laws, what do you feel about it? Like, you feel it's too extreme? Yeah, it's too or? extreme because if they pass a law like that, being how the um, the, econ the economy is, mm -hmm. it's going to be buck wild. It's going to be one of those things where, you know, you're going to have, it's going to be like San Francisco. Yeah. Because remember, people don't have money like that. Mm -hmm. So now you pass a, a law, all of the those people are going to flock here to pump mm -hmm. their money into the impoverished people that they can legally, you know, do this. You know what I mean? What do you mean? I mean, legally, if they pass it, like, you know, it's fine for someone to have those male-male mm -hmm. relationships, female-female mm -hmm. relationships. People will come here and they have money, just like how, you know, prostitution is kind of mm -hmm. in a way, but they will come here and do that. They will come here and put their money into people that don't have that kind of money and, you mm -hmm. know, and push that type of agenda forward. Mm -hmm. you know yeah, yeah, definitely. And I think that we don't, I don't know if they want Ghana Accra to be like San Francisco. Yeah, you know what I'm yeah. I don't think they really want it to be like People are going to do what they want to do regardless. Even though, you know, day. like you said, that culture shock kind of messed me up when I came here and I seen, because when I was on the block and I seen all them females, I really was saying to myself, I was like, yo, it's all kind of people out here. I seen all nationalities on that block. Exactly. You feel me? So I was just like, yo, they, they here do. because they know it's they, funny. They, 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 exactly, right? So it's like, it's different. But um, I mean, culture shock too would be, um, you know, just how, how uh, you know, they have a system kind of like the U.S. of um, like the first time I went inside of a pharmacy, mm -hmm. I, it freaked me out. I was like, what? oh shit, the people use the medicine here? What do you mean? Like I'm like, but I thought, like, you know, people use natural medicine. So oh, I'm like, I don't think yeah, people were, like, pharmacy. in a pharmacy. And I'm a pharmacy really? technician. Really? Yeah, I'm a pharmacy tech. you got to have a pharmacy, though. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. But I was just thinking to myself, like, I didn't know people was oh, readily using the yeah, same medications yeah, that we exactly, use. Exactly, exactly. Like, Are the same know, system. Yeah, the yeah. same type of system. So, I'm like, this is wild. What about, like, food and stuff like that? What is your favorite food here? Is it easy for you to yeah. adjust to, like, the you know, center? You know, it wasn't at all. It wasn't at all. <laughs> i tell you a story. This is a wild story. So when I came here the first day, I couldn't eat nothing. I'm like, pizza. And the next day, the moms is like, you know, my artist mom, because I'm staying on the compound with them. She's like, yo, you ain't going to eat? I couldn't eat nothing the next day. She brought, like, some food, food, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Soup. I was mm -hmm. just like, man, I made my own food. I brought, like, <laughs> 10 salmon and shit, corned beef and all kinds of wild stuff. So I bring this stuff in, right? Mm -hmm. So I made this food, and they laughing at me. So the third day, she was like, don't worry, I got something for you. You're going to eat everything. So she blended up this green peas thing, blended mm -hmm. it up. It was black. You know what it's called? Bidru. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like for your blood. And she was like, it's, it's going to give you an appetite. You're going to eat everything. And literally the next day, she had fufu in front of me. I bust that up. I bust up everything that was in front of me. <laughs> yeah, so my favorite would be um, banku and tilapia. Yeah, yeah, I like, I like that uh, too. I like apropensa mm -hmm. with kota, a.k.a. crab. Yeah. I like that <laughs> also. Like uh, pea, pea soup? <laughs> what is it, pea soup? Um, they they got um they got different kind of soups. It's but a, I like their light soup. I like yeah, the, light uh, soup, light soup. I like um, I just like soups. Period. But I don't eat goat and beef and pork mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Yeah, so, I don't eat that. You stuff. know what I'm saying? 
Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. What about relationships? I know you hey. did like, you talk about curvy women. Hey. What is it looking like out here for you? I mean, hey, you know, I, <laughs> I made sure that I was what you call. I made sure that I came here and I don't get myself into too many trouble. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, um, yeah, I got somebody that I, you know, I talk to and mm-hmm. that, you know what I'm saying? We, uh, we we uh we have a good you know uh relationship really stuff. i'm jealous yeah, yeah you know we have we have a good uh <laughs> we have a good kind of you know where it's not any headaches yeah. as it was like you know when i was in the states so, so what is the difference it's, it's like, a good girl yeah so what is the difference between the name women and this is different. New York, the women mm. you were talking to in new york well i would just say uh that, you know i think there's a lot of similarities <laughs> But there is a lot of differences too. The What's differences, the similarities? Uh, the similarities are that you know everybody wants to uh, have a sense of security. No, right? yeah, <laughs> you know, I think that. Um, but uh, the differences would be that um, it's not as much. Um, uh, I don't know. Say clean cleanness. I don't know in America. Uh, oh my more, god, clean. Clingier. They can be clingier in America? Clean. No, yeah, in America, I just feel our women sometimes they get a little bit more clingier. Yeah. And I think yeah. it has a lot to do with, you know, probably not having a dad in the home, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Things like that. Attachment issues. Yeah, attachment issues and shit. A lot of issues, right? We mm-hmm. have as in a whole. I don't even want to say it's only the women. I say it's us too. But right? no, that's a difference. So what's the similarities? The similarities. Mm-hmm. I would say that the women I think, oh, you know, they both, yeah, they both the have this, yeah, they both have the same style. type of security. Um, you know, that's another culture shock for me. How much similar people try to be, but it's it's not the same. Like when they say, you know, the N word, mm-hmm. it just be all out of context. Yeah, they all laugh, right? That, like, yo, <laughs> you know, use the N word like that. Man. Yeah, You're using it wrong. So you know what, like. I was dating a Ghanaian guy, and the rumor on the street is if you complain after he provides for you, you're Mm. seen as spoiled. So that's probably why you don't hear much like fuss or where you at and all of that after you you know take care of your woman. Uh, Maybe, maybe that might be it. You Um, think that may be it? Okay, I've never heard of that one, so maybe that may be the situation, (laughs) right? Because you know know, it's more traditional here, so. You know, it's like they, a, it's a lot different. What too. they prioritize here is different than America's because yeah. a lot of women in America making their own money. So mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it's like, I want your time. I want your quality time. So it comes up as like clean. Yeah. They come off a little bit like that. But I think another thing too is that we just different in, in regards to America to here mm-hmm. when it comes down to in the bedroom too. Oh, so we, what's, we, so, yeah, big yeah, yeah. what's that like? Because you know That's what? I heard they're really quiet. Is this true? Yeah, they don't they don't operate like how we do. Like, like do they moan? Know, I think yeah, yeah, they don't moan. Oh, okay, that, right? Okay, okay. But I think that <laughs> we are I, we are open to more shit going on. I think that because we have, you know, you grow up, you go to school and all that. Mm-hmm. Like here, you know, it's a lot different. So they're not open. What do you to, mean? I mean like you know, we are more open to sexual different experiences. Yeah, yeah, different oh, experiences. okay. Yeah, they're they more like innocent more, here. Yeah, it seems like it's innocent, but I'm saying like, yo, who skipped that part of the class? No, no, no. It's you not innocent. It's reserved. Especially women, because I heard like women, um, I had an interview with her name was uh, I forgot her name. Hmm. I put the video up there. Yeah. I put the link up there. But she was mentioning like, uh, how the women aren't supposed to be heard, but just seen. So they don't mm-hmm. moan loudly. And I heard the women aren't supposed to enjoy sex. It's supposed to be the man. Well, so maybe they're not looking yeah, to like cool seek out that, different experiences. Certain like things that y'all ain't doing, it just makes it look really weird to us who come <laughs> from, from America. <laughs> like what? Oh. oh, come on, son. What, oh. what they ain't doing. Come on. <laughs> you probably experienced this as a woman. I don't even, I don't even need to talk about it. Don't, about that. don't kill me. I don't know. But if if we, us as men here, and we experience certain things with Ghana and women, then. No, it's the women get, that's Ghanaian, reserved. Ghana and women got men. Women it's have to be the experienced men. the same shit. Oh, maybe not. Then. Let me Sorry. tell you. Let me tell you, there is a difference. 
But I feel like, you know, um, that's something you would kind of appreciate too a little bit. But it's like, you know, you, you know, it's like if you had pancakes, you know what I'm saying, waffles all your life, then you come to Ghana and they're giving you French crepes. You and me, we were still going to want some, some waffles <laughs> exactly. and pancakes. Yeah. You know so I mean? do you prefer dating American women? I don't know if your, your friend will watch this. Nah, like, I'm going to be honest with you. Like, for me um, here, you know, I just, I enjoy, uh, you know, for me, you know, I got somebody that I talk to. Mm -hmm. But I think that um, the fact that a, a gentleman could come here and there's different flavors of women because when you come to ghana there's not only ghanaian women here, it's women yes, from, yes, from all over exactly you know I mean? like you know i'm talking to you right now you from jamaica but mm -hmm. you're here in ghana and um i think those are the things that are great you know being able to you know uh just experience uh people that have traveled mm -hmm. i think that's what the beautiful thing about ghana right you come out to places like this um and you never know who you run into who yeah. you end up uh, hitting a conversation up with so yeah man as far as like you know just meeting people and uh you know being in a place where you know you can grow yourself you right. know what i mean yeah yeah you know what i agree with you I, for me there is no preference i don't know where my guy may be mm -hmm. because i don't like traditional and i don't like completely modern like i don't want to mm -hmm. go 50 50 but i don't mm -hmm. want to be a, a princess either mm -hmm. like completely I want to be a princess and a partner. <laughs> like, I want an interdependent relationship. I don't want, like, oh, daddy, daddy, yeah. uh, I need my nails done. Uh, mm -hmm. I need this done. I need, like, I don't want to ask yeah. every single time for. I agree with that. I you know, like, support. I think that, you know, uh, with relationships, you know, everybody got to give it time. But once you get into it, I think that, um, you know, if yourself and your partner, whoever that may be, Y'all can have a common goal. Exactly. You're able to, that, that, that easily puts two heads is better than one. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So you're able to kind of grow and scale because you may find something that you're really good at within, you know, mm -hmm. the common goal and your partner may be good at in, in the mm -hmm. common goal. And then you're able to kind of... You know, I just know, like, my do. ideal partner wouldn't mm -hmm. be, like just in one place their whole life they have to have yeah. travel to different yeah, places yeah, yeah. Fact, to, to fact. experience different yeah, type no of doubt, relationship no doubt, no doubt. to see like yeah. okay i can balance with her yeah. because if they've been here in ghana their whole lives yeah, exactly. it's just you not gonna to, work yeah, because you know, you know, <laughs> like it. our mindsets are different yeah, yeah, what we right. um how we balance with each other is different like what I can offer him is yeah. not beneficial because I'm not a housewife completely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do want to leave the house sometime <laughs> and work towards my purpose too, you know? So, um, but you know, I like to do a little bit of traditional, um, roles. I like to play a traditional role sometimes too. And I like a man to sometimes play that role, but, yeah, for me, I think the benefit of being in Ghana is you get to meet so many different people from all over the world that yeah, may yeah, have yeah. traveled, you know, maybe yeah. well traveled or yeah. even if they're just traditional, like you just learn a lot when you travel. Yeah, so what other important. places have you traveled beside uh, Ghana? So outside of African, African countries? African countries, I have not. I uh, got, you know, denied going into Nigeria. I think I just did my paperwork wrong. Um, but yeah, this is, this is it, you know what I'm saying? Besides, you know, crossing over on different flights, you know, I think I went to Abuja or something like that, no, passing Abuja. through, <laughs> Abuja, I'm just passing through on my way back to the States, you know, but, um, yeah, this is the only African country that I've been mm -hmm. to. Um, I definitely want to see some more, you know, but Tawana, of course I want to see Nigeria. Uh, I like to be able to see uh, South Sudan. A lot of people oh, like, yo, they, they like, warring over there. Like, maybe yeah. a lot of the places. I have some friends in Botswana. Yeah, Botswana. I uh, met some people from Congo, but Congo has, okay. you know, okay. the war genocide right now. Yeah, and yeah. Um, Zimbabwe and okay. South, Sudan, South Sudan sounds Sudan. nice too. South yeah, Sudan. yeah. Yeah, definitely. I like to check out South Africa, probably Zimbabwe or something South like Africa that. South Africa sounds yeah. nice too. Yeah, yeah, South Africa is dope. Senegal. I would love to visit okay. Senegal. Yeah. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, that's close to Gambia, though, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it is. Yeah, I'll check out Gambia, too. So, so you know. who's a perfect fit for Ghana? Like, who would uh -huh. you say come will, should come here and move here, and who should not? Who would not be a good fit? All right, I would say, you know what I'm saying, the person that's a perfect fit for, let's say, Ghana would be uh, the person that... Um, 
I would say a perfect fit though is people that grew up probably in the inner cities. You know what I'm saying? I've been fed that yeah. stereotype of Africa. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I think that when you grow up in the inner cities, it gives you a certain level of uh, streetwise um, and a, a level that you have of persistence. Mm -hmm. Because remember, when we live in the inner cities, usually we live on one on top of each other. Exactly. So you have to you have to have character. You know, yeah. have that personality to make it through those um, living like that. And I think when you come to places like this, like Africa, or anywhere outside of the U.S. Um, you start to be able to understand, you know, how, uh, how you can make your moves and how, how you are viewed outside of the States, right? Mm -hmm. I think inside of the States, we not, we, we just like another, you know, a drop in a bucket. Exactly. But when you come out to places like this in Ghana, you know, you can really stand out. You can really kind of do your thing. Mm -hmm. And, um, the sky is limitless in regards to the opportunity that mm -hmm. you can, you can make for yourself. Yeah. So what, what was your, what so far is your per the best thing about Ghana and the worst thing like for you? Ah, man, the best thing for Ghana for me is, um, uh, the peace of mind, um, the being able to, uh, grow and scale a business yeah. that I can see me, uh, launching into, you know what I'm saying? Fortune 500. Um, once I stick with it, um, you know, these opportunities are endless, uh, because I'm definitely the place where the resource is at, right? Mm -hmm. So starting cash, you daddy, it's not like I'm importing it in from India or I'm importing it from China or, you know, in the mm -hmm. U S importing it. In. I'm right here. i uh, manufacturing my product. Um, so, you know, the sky is endless for that. Um, what was the other half of the question you asked? It was the worst part of it. Uh, the worst part, the worst part of it's Ghana. Good you forgot. The, yeah, the worst part <laughs> of Ghana, I would say, is that I didn't get here earlier. <laughs> you know, I wish I would have came here at least ten yeah. years before. I did at least. So, 10. so why would if you have never experienced like? And I'm not trying to change your your mm -hmm. answer, but most people would think like your worst part would be like the inconvenience because you know mm. you. So well, why wouldn't it be like power outages, water outages? Nah, we, is because, that not the okay, worst part? That's or? not the worst part because mm -hmm. now that I'm kind of like, I kind of got my groove in, right? Yeah, you, you know, you, like I told you, I just bought some land, right? Mm -hmm. and, and a lot of that came from my cashews, right? Mm -hmm. So I feel like if I would did this 10 years beforehand, I wouldn't even be worrying about, about water that. or electricity exactly. out because I would have already bought solar, right? Um, I would have already done that, you know, and land or what it was mm -hmm. costing back then, you know, you think about it, you know, you, you would have been able to see it. You know, I would have needed the same thing though. I would have needed a month and a half to be here in 2015. If I came exactly. here in 2015 to really see what's going on. Exactly. So that's the point I'm trying to make yeah, is yeah. sometimes you have to sacrifice for at least a year, maybe five years to build rebuild in another continent because this is completely yeah, this new is to not, him yes. and i yes, you know yes, when yes, my parents yes, yes. moved to america from jamaica like they needed five years to get from me and my sister shared a bedroom eight years apart she's exactly. 16 i'm eight you know my brother being a pull on a pullout couch <laughs> you know to I'm us having a six you. bedroom house in a few years mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm, so mm -hmm, if mm -hmm, they can mm -hmm. experience that in america i can experience it here and even mm -hmm. faster mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. of the lack of competition now but if you wait till mm -hmm. like 2030 there's yeah. going to be way more competition so in more Ghana. Yeah, yeah. yeah but for now like i think it's easy for pioneers like yourself to yeah. Yeah. get established yeah. here and like you know, make something happen faster than it would happen for you probably in New York. I agree. I agree. Mm -hmm. I think there's um, opportunities for some great collaborations. That's what yeah, I would say. Yeah, it's a you great know, place um, to network. You know, being coming from Jamaica and also uh, coming, you know, from the States, I believe there's some really great collaborations. If you can, you can think about it, you can put it on paper mm -hmm. and you can present it. You don't need to have the money. You don't need to have the money because someone else is going to see that opportunity and what you're bringing to the table and you'll be able to formulate a team to be able to fund that. Yeah. Um, there's great collaborations that are coming here. Mm -hmm. uh, and when I'm talking about it, it's not only us that's doing it, right? There's other races that exactly. are here. Exactly. And, and they don't let you know that they're here. And they're collaborating <laughs> and they're doing really big 
project. Exactly. So, you know, I want to shout out to everybody, all the diasporans that are here and that are doing great things, right? Mm -hmm. You know, yourself out here, you know, thank mm -hmm. you for interviewing me. I've been watching what you've been doing, loving what you've been oh, doing. Oh, thank you. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, that's a fact. That's no, a fact. I appreciate you coming on my um, channel and promoting these cashews, y'all. Hey. He's out here doing big things from New York. Um, I think, yeah, exactly. So, you know, like he's showing you the ropes, like you could come out here and start a business and get it scaling within a year right. and be able to buy land. Like he's yes. done this all within a year. So if he can do it, you can do it, especially if you're yeah. a pioneer as well. Yeah. But if not, you know, just make the visit, study the environment and see if it's like the place for you. You know, that's, yes. that's what I would yes. say. Yeah. So what is your advice for people who may be discouraged by like family? Like what did your family wow. and your friends have to say? Wow. Wow. So, you know, um, I think that, you know, me being, uh, you know, like West Indian. So it's a little bit different than if it was like straight American, mm -hmm. you know, uh, but I believe that you can't listen to anybody. Mm -hmm. You cannot listen because most people is going to advise you on their fears. Their fears. So yeah. they say, yo, you going to Miami? Oh, sure. I went to Miami. You know, there were sharks in the water. Come on. Exactly. Man, come on. Stop playing. So, you know, these are the things that most people is going to advise you on, on what their fears are. Exactly. So you have to be a person that kind of believes. Uh, and, and you know what I'm saying? That the, your, your, your guidance, your discernment and just move with it. Because mm -hmm. I'll be honest with you, you know, I knew that I was. I knew that um, it was a reason for me to come to Ghana. Then I know it was a reason for me to get an apartment in Ghana. Mm -hmm. And then when I started the Cashew Daddy brand, I, w I found out what the purpose was. Yeah. What was the reason for me really being here? Why you because felt pushed here? Yeah. Way after I'm gone, and way after I'm gone, and not here anymore, I believe that Cashew Daddy. Uh, will be a legacy brand and it will continue to grow way after me yeah um you know leaving something for my kids to continue to build on um building that relationship and uh partnerships uh with the with the cashew farmers in ghana and then looking to build relationship with other farmers not only in ghana not only in africa right other african countries but also in the west indies right so you know uh the future for cashew daddy i believe is um uh, is bright um, I'm, you know, I'm constantly looking for strategic uh, partnerships and mm -hmm. people to collaborate with to uh, take this thing to the next level. Yeah. So, yeah, you know. Um, That's crazy. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. You know, first they'll ask you why, why, why are you making a move? Then they'll ask you yeah. how, how yeah. you do it. Because I'm sure they're asking you how now, yeah, right? Yeah, like, yeah. have you changed anybody's perspective on yeah. Africa? Yeah, I think I have, you know. Um, but those people have yet to, you know, uh, get off the wheel, I believe, some of them, right? Yeah. Um, and I believe some people realize to themselves, like, wow, because like I said, you know, I have some real close family and friends that, mm -hmm. you know, they still in the streets and they still kind of dealing with, you know, the results of being in the streets, mm -hmm. right? So when you turn around, you look at somebody like me and, you know, I'm in Ghana, but I'm, I was I was dibbling and dabbling in the same things you in, mm -hmm. but I just kind of let go, right? And I'm yeah. here and I'm billing and you can see that I'm billing something that's legitimate. Mm -hmm. um, you know, something I don't have to hide and duck about. Exactly. And, and you know what I'm saying? That kind of makes a, any family member or friend think about, yeah, yo, exactly. what am I really doing, right? What am I right? doing, right? So I would just advise anybody, you know what I'm saying? Uh, the cost of living is so much different. Um, you know what I'm saying? We need to be able to understand uh, financial literacy. Mm -hmm. and that's what's going to allow us to be able to invest our money the right way. Exactly. Um, yeah, and, and just after allows you to be where the resource is, mm -hmm. right? So if you're trying to do cosmetics, all the shade butter is here, right? If you're trying to deal with, let's say, with me, the cashew, the cashew farms are here. If you're trying to deal with, you know, different kind of, let's say, uh, herbal medicines, they're all here, right? Mm -hmm. So all these, all these things are here, they grow and they flourish. Um, mm -hmm. They're all over, right? You know, I'm looking around, I'm just seeing, you know, different things, mm -hmm. uh, resources. So it's all here in, uh, in, in Africa and also in Ghana. So I would say, you know, the sky is limitless. And I would say to anybody that just has a fear about, you know, I don't know what I'm going to do. I would say come and visit. But don't come to visit for two weeks. Come to visit for at least a month. Mm -hmm. um, you can always hit myself up. No, hit, yeah. hit up la la. no, you mentioned something about financial literacy. So in yeah. America, it's easy to avoid financial literacy because you can buy things on credit. 
Yes, you know, yes, 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 um, yes, yes, yes. and uh, what is so? I'm sure you've learned a lot yeah. about financial literacy yeah. since being here. Do you have any yeah. tips? Yeah, so that's why I said people that lived in the inner city and all of a lot of us that was hustling because we understand shoebox money, you understand how to kind of <laughs> put it together and then sit it to the side. Yeah, um, this is not a place where you're gonna come in, there's credit, there's uh, yeah. you know, you nah, there's no freebies, but what I would say is, is the, what. It's exactly what you think it would be living in a black country. Right. You understand? So you don't Cash need credit. Only. So if you thought if you thought what it would be like, you don't need to have credit when you're living in a black country. Mm -hmm. Because your deals, some of your deals are just gonna be totally different exactly. than what it would be. Like in America. a barter barter. Yeah, system. you can barter stuff out. Mm -hmm. You understand? And it's exactly that. Exactly. So I didn't know it was gonna be like that. And when I came here to to be able to deal like that. It's great for me, right? Yeah. I like to negotiate like that, right? Yeah. Because now that I have something in my hand, how does this value you? How can we add value to each other? Mm -hmm. So um, there's no credit system here. Um, and I kind of laugh when people be like, you know, I'm trying to get the bank to... Like, right. Come on, it's the bank also, is trying to get your money. Right. It's also <laughs> ins inspiring being in Ghana because if you study Ghana, because there's a lack of development, like a lot of people are really independent, whether they're yeah. selling like the yeah. smallest, right. whether they have the smallest shack or a container shop or a big company, like yeah. they're starting from the bottom. Yeah, you start from top. you start from the bottom, and uh, once you get your groove in it and understanding how to scale this. You know what I'm saying? How am I going to get to the money? Yeah, then you run it up, right? Mm -hmm. So you see a lot of people here really well off. And I think that's one of the things that happened, just like in America. They don't teach people here how to scale a business. Exactly. So you may see a person on the corner for 10 years, right? Exactly. So how, how do they scale that? I think the same thing with us, right? Um, we get a little nervous when it comes down to playing a game, the way that yeah, needs to be played fear. sometimes in America. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, we get a little bit of that fear. But... um. That's it, you know, and you can see the financial literacy when you get here because there is no credit, right? Mm -hmm. So you start to see exactly how you're going to do what you do. But um, I think yeah. anybody that's a hustler um, and you can try to, you, you can make something mm -hmm. out of nothing, as they would say, uh, this is the places that you're going to thrive in. Exactly. You know, you're going to thrive in because I was, it was one thing to the next for me trying to figure out how am I going to make money while I'm in Ghana. Yeah. I had to try to figure it out. But and if you literally have to be spoon fed, this nah, is not the place nah, for you. It's not going to happen. It's not. If the someone place. has to tell you to this is how you're going to grind, it's not. It's not going to. It's not going to work for you, um, because it's it's a place where everybody's trying to figure it out. Mm -hmm. So if you can't figure it out and you get around ten people, it's going to be probably nine of those people trying to figure it out just like you. Exactly. And everybody like waiting to go get a job, like. You can't, you can't do that. You got to be able to figure it out. And it's okay to say you get a job because we do know about that, but you got to create your own job. Yes, exactly. Create this your is own the, job. Yeah, this, this is why I say, you know, it's a place for pioneers, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah you gotta, it is. You got to be on it. You, you have to be You got to be. It. So, yeah, that's why people who, you know, fear stepping out on their own will talk mm -hmm. you down on your decision mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. have you doubt your decisions, yes. you know. And you can't listen to that if you know you're a self-starter. But, um, yeah, I think, you know, I've asked you all the questions. We've done a <laughs> lot of footage. So, you guys, please go and check out his business. Do you sell this in America? Do you ship it to America? Yeah, so I'm countries? doing shipping right now. I'm working on my exporting. Mm -hmm. But I am shipping to America. You know, customers, they can hit me up. Um, the cash your daddy brand dot com. Mm -hmm. um, right now, we're experiencing a little bit of issues right now with our dot com. But you can always hit us up. Our information is on there. Mm -hmm. um, also, we're on Instagram, the cash your daddy brand dot com. Mm -hmm. I you put it always, all here. You can just hit us up, and from there, you know, we'll take care of your order. Um, we do ship DH, uh, DHL. So your, your order should be there within uh, three to five business days. Support my here. brother. Like, he just came out here and made Please a living do. for himself. And even if you don't, he's still going to succeed. Please do. Win. Please do. Either, what, what did DJ Khaled say? Either you going to help us win or you going to yeah, watch us win. win. <laughs> one of, one of the, you know, either one. And, you know, coming out of Miami, you know what I'm saying? Definitely, you know what I'm saying? Uh, being in the radio stations with Khaled and these uh, different people. You got to have the energy for this, man. If you got the energy... Uh, for this, I would say that Africa is a great place for you to kind of, you know, make your moves, make your strides. I'm not telling anybody to just jump and just yeah. drop everything. <laughs> but if you could do three months here, 
you know what I'm saying? Six months, you know what I mean? Nine months there, mm -hmm. you'll be able to figure it out a lot faster. Yeah. It's an emerging market, uh, Ghana is. So, you know, land is a great thing. Tech is a great thing. Uh, medical is a great thing. So all of these are uh, different industries, are great industries, and they're emerging and they're budding here in uh, Ghana. So I would say, yeah, you definitely want to get on it early before it's too oh late. Oh my gosh, I don't even want to end the interview <laughs> here, you guys, because he has so much knowledge and like wisdom to give you guys. I, Donald, you know, Donald, they call, that's why they call him Daddy. Yeah, you know what I mean? Cash you daddy. Cash so y'all go check him out. And uh, I thank you for coming on no and problem. interviewing so with love. me. I really in, am inspired by what you're doing with your business and how fast it's scaling. And I'm sure you inspire other people as well. So do you have any final words for them? Ah, final words is, yo, you know, we are doing this thing out here in Ghana. I would definitely say, you know, um, you know, uh, if you have a thought about making a move to Africa, you know what I'm saying, or Ghana, you know, just make it happen. I would mm -hmm. say do at least uh, 30 days. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to hit us up, you know what I'm saying, the Cash Your Daddy brand, just hit me up on um, Instagram. Again, that's uh, the Cash Your Daddy brand. If you guys want to reach out to me, I don't give my number all the time, but I'll put my number here at 054-300-3303. Yes, I am looking for strategic investors to invest in the Cash Your Daddy brand. Um, again, I haven't taken on any investors, but of course, um, you know, the plan is to be able to build our processing. So I'm definitely looking for strategic partners for that. And um, yeah, I would just say, you know what I'm saying? Follow your dreams. Live with purpose. All right. Thank you. All right. Yeah, love, love. He was waiting for that hug. <laughs> Let me tell you, okay, girl. Yeah, you go, ah, one love. Yo. <laughs>